Hey friends, welcome back to the Bald Booktuber. My name is Scott. Today we're going to be doing a review of the movie A Man Called Otto with Tom Hanks. My wife and I watched this last night. This is an adaptation of the book A Man Called Uva by Frederick Bachman, a Swedish author. Uh, if you haven't seen my video for my favorite reads of 2022, that was certainly on there, uh, one of my favorite reads ever. As you'll see, I really did enjoy this adaptation with Tom Hanks. The writing credit uh, gives credit not only to the book A Man Called Uva, but also the 2015 Swedish film uh, adapted at, with the same name, A Man Called Uva. That was written and directed by a gentleman named Hans Holm, and the starring role was played by Rolf Lasgard. I won't be talking too much about that particular adaptation, the subtitled in English uh, Swedish version, uh, because really I'm going to confine this review to A Man Called Otto, uh, the book itself, and some of the differences, uh, which as you'll see are fairly surface level between the movie and the book. Um, short story, uh, I, I really did love this film a lot. Uh, if you go on to Rotten Tomatoes, you'll see that it has a 97% audience score and around a 70% uh, film critic score. When I've read some of the criticisms, they've been things like the movie was too predictable. And spoiler alert, this isn't an M. Night Shyamalan film. You're not, you, it, it's not the type of film where you're trying to figure out the plot twists. So predictability is really not the point. Uh, I've also heard that they have seen done uh, a grumpy man becoming less grumpy before. You're missing the point. Uh, I even saw one film critic saying that uh, during the course of the movie, he hoped that at one point Otto would be successful in taking his own life. So whoever that film critic is, you're a terrible person and that's awful. In any case, let's talk about happier thoughts. Uh, let me give you... Quickly, a brief synopsis of the book. Meet Uva. He's a curmudgeon. The kind of man who points at people he dislikes as if they were burglars caught outside his bedroom window. He has staunch principles, strict routines, and a short fuse. People call him the bitter neighbor from hell. But must Uva be bitter just because he doesn't walk around with a smile plastered to his face all the time? Behind the cranky exterior, there's a story and a sadness. So when one November morning, a chatty young couple with two chatty young daughters moves in next door and accidentally flattens Uva's mailbox, it's the lead-in to a comical and heartwarming tale of unkempt cats, unexpected friendship, and the ancient art of backing up a U-Haul, all of which will change one cranky old man and a local residence association to their very foundations. One important thing to note, I think, from a trigger warning perspective is that there are elements of attempted self-harm in this film and, of course, in the book itself. The, uh, the whole concept is that he has lost his wife recently, uh, his wife Sonia, uh, longtime wife, and he doesn't want to go on without her. So we see elements of, of him visiting her grave. We see elements of him starting to transition away from mortal concerns uh, on, on this planet, such as the electricity, as he pursues joining her in, uh, in the afterlife that he believes in. So um, if that is something uh, particularly uh, difficult uh, for you to process or to see um, on screen, uh, that, that may be something to keep in mind. Um, as I was looking over at my wife throughout the film, uh, these were, were things that she really had a tough time processing, uh, which is certainly understandable. Um, on to happier things, though. The whole concept of the story is that at the beginning, he has very little in his mind to live for. He has very little left to accomplish, and certainly he doesn't... Uh, see himself as um, necessary anymore uh, to go on living without Sonia. By the end of the story, uh, certainly there's a full arc there and there are um, people reliant upon him, 
people that he cares about and loves and, and develops friendships with throughout the course of the story, um, which is what makes it so heartwarming. Um, and, and at very, various points, very, very sad. Uh, my wife was a mess uh, at the end of the film. Uh, and for a little bit afterwards, uh, she, uh, th this, this movie hit her really hard. She had not read the book yet, so she wasn't sure what to expect. Um, from an acting perspective, um, I think obviously Tom Hanks was unbelievable in the title role. Um, I am biased. I am a massive Tom Hanks fan. I was predisposed to like his, uh, take on this character that I already really, really love, but Hanks really owned it in this role. Uh, it, it is quite clear uh, that he is a fan of the book. It is quite clear that he has seen the movie adaptation and was taking some of the cues from that. Um, but, uh, and I've watched some of his, his interviews on various late night shows and these kinds of things after the fact, and uh, he just really, really enjoyed playing a grumpy dude. So... Uh, that was that was enjoyable to him uh, on a personal level. Uh, awesomely, his son, Truman Hanks, uh, played the young version of Otto that we see in the flashbacks throughout the film. And I thought Truman did a very, very nice job as well, particularly uh, considering that he doesn't have other acting credits to his name. This was sort of a, a first-time uh, project for him, and uh, incredible work. Um the, I think, star of the movie, at least in, in my mind, even beyond what Hanks was able to accomplish, was Mariana Trevino, who played Marisol, um, the next-door neighbor, the uh, Mexican immigrant in the movie. Uh, it's an Iranian immigrant to Sweden in the book and in the initial adaptation, but I think a Mexican immigrant makes sense in the context of this taking place in modern-day uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, and she was an absolute force. Uh, every scene that they shared together was incredible. Um, slowly we see Otto opening up more and not only showing her respect and seeing her as an equal, but also, uh, finding it, uh, reasonable to share his past um, and to talk about Sonia, um, and to share those remembrances he had of her with Marisol. Very, very good stuff. I am very, very hopeful, even though I'm not really into awards ceremonies and these kinds of things, but I'm very, very hopeful that not only the movie, but both of these amazing actors get accolades and at least get nominations for what they did in this movie. It was great. One of the uh, common themes throughout uh, the movie that I thought was captured well was um, physical remembrances of Sonia. So um, we see that he had jumped on this train to give uh, Sonia back a book, and that's how they met. He didn't have enough money to purchase a ticket, so Sonia provided uh, the difference in um, change to him. And he ended up receiving a very um, apparently rare quarter out of that uh, exchange and uh, like a 1964 pure silver quarter. I don't know anything about coin collecting, obviously, but apparently it's uh, worth money. It's rare. Um, and that coin ends up being uh, something that he keeps throughout the course of his life. So it's always something that he has in a special place every day. He always picks it up, puts it in his pocket every single day. Uh, and he's done that for the past 50 years or so. Um, you know, during her lifetime and, and afterwards, it's something that is very meaningful to him. And we get a glimpse later on of a clown attempting to switch out that quarter for a uh one that isn't uh important i guess uh so um so that's an important element to the story we also see uh all of her coats and everything still hanging on the rack he keeps all of that stuff out uh almost to ensure that he always has something familiar about sonia with him at all times um 
and that leads to um, a disagreement with him and Marisol when she, uh, you know, very kindly offers to help him pack up some of Sonia's things um, and, you know, make make space in his life so he can move on. Um, and I know I've got some mild spoilers in here for certain things, so I'm, I'm sorry about that. Uh, it's hard to talk about without at least some spoilers. But again, it's not really the kind of movie where spoilers are the point. It's the type of movie where you watch it to see how character unfolds. Um, so I'm hopeful that uh, none of this spoils your movie going experience. And really otherwise, um, I just wanted to make this quick video to have as many people as possible both read this book and watch this movie. I have heard the, I guess, criticism lashed at it that this is a movie for old people. Um, and I am an old person, but I don't think that, um, I don't think someone being younger is going to preclude them from enjoying this story. It's a universal type of story that all ages, uh, everyone on this planet can enjoy because it is heartwarming. It is very, very sad at multiple points in time. And it is something where, uh, by the end, you're definitely cheering for this dude. Uh, you really want uh, him to uh, succeed. You want him to continue on his path because he's helping so many people and making so many new friends. And, um, and it doesn't hurt that again, that Hanks is naturally charming and that we all root for him regardless. So, um, I hope you've enjoyed my short review here. Uh, I certainly loved this film. My wife loved the film, uh, despite again, never having read the book. Um, I think if you read the book first, that can be additive to the experience, but I don't think it's a requirement. Um, in general, I, I tend to tell people to read the book first before watching an adaptation if you can. But I, again, I don't think that's a requirement in this case. Uh, you can do them in either order, uh, but I definitely would recommend it. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this short one. Uh, as we always say here, publication order always, my friends.